Yeah. Hey, guys. What's up, everybody? I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I thought I canceled this live yesterday. I thought I canceled it yesterday. I just got a bunch of messages from you guys. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I had to work today, man. My bad. Martin just sent me a DM. I didn't know you guys were in here, man. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> Yo, you y'all are crazy, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Thank you. I, yo, man, yeah, bro, I, my bad, y'all, my bad, man, my bro Graf came in here and let y'all know, man, this shit, I canceled the live. Yeah, no, nah, I showed up, man, I, yo, I, I definitely don't want to ever disrespect the chat, man, my fault, y'all, my fault, I, I, yo, I, I thought I, I thought I deleted this, guys, I thought I deleted it, uh, no, I'm all good, I'm all, come on, guys, I'm good, man, I'm good now, yo, look, I, I actually was about to head to the gym. Actually about to head to the gym. I thought I deleted it. <laughs> I thought I deleted it, man. What's good, guys? What's good? <laughs> What's good, guys? Look, man. Um, You know what? <laughs> ben Bass said no excuses. Look, you got, look, you, this, this is what, what I'm going to do, man. Look, yeah, Graf will never let me forget this. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I know, man. Listen, guys. Um, I, 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 I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, you guys want to do a lot. I mean, I really don't. You know, I really wasn't prepared. Wasn't prepared. Yes, I was definitely daydreaming about Schmitties. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, I was I was actually about to head to the gym, guys. But but look, this is what we're gonna do, y'all. You guys wanna craft a live? Let's craft a live, yo. I am what I'm gonna do is I am going to stay live for you know for about half hour, 45 minutes, and um I'm gonna allow the chat to dictate the show. Normally, I don't do that. You know, normally I, I you know, I, I come on, I have um, uh, a direction the show's going to go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to answer some questions, right? And then we are going to go live. <laughs> Say your call, old man. <laughs> ben Bad, get the F, Ben Bad, you way older than me. Get the F out of here. Get the F out of here, yo. Yes, Devontae Adams, yes, we did watch the AP interview. It was, it was you know, terrific, man. We Graf and I actually covered that yesterday, man. So look, this is what we're going to do. We're, we're going to talk about some other things, man. You know, I wanted to do a live tomorrow and talk about a few players um, that that I feel can actually propel this rate of defense into a top five unit. So we can get into that. Uh, we can get into some news. And guess what? Let's talk about the new rule changes, man. Okie Raider. Look, man, I like like I said before, man, the, the National Football League every year is trying to make a an, an inherently dangerous game safe. And 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 what the National Football League is doing is they're killing the goose to lay the golden egg. Like you have things in this country that are not good for you, right? But you can't outlaw everything that's not good for you. You can't have this perfect utopia of a game in football. It, it, it just does not make any sense for the National Football League to have a contact sport be put into a, a, like 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 almost a, a I, I don't know the hip drop tackle. I don't I don't understand how anybody that is a hundred and 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 ninety pounds going to tackle a guy like Derrick Henry when he gets into the secondary. Like what 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 what, what, are, what are we doing to to this game? Now, you know, with the new kickoff rules, you cannot make an inherently dangerous game safe. You just can't. And if you if you take the danger aspect out of football, now football becomes something that's unrecognizable and something that is unwatchable. They are going to officiate and rule change the NFL into the NBA. All offense, all bullshit. They might as well just make it like arena football. Shout out to everybody in the chat, man. Shout out to my guy, Rudy the Vet Russo, man. 
with the nine dollar holler, man. Yo, y'all don't gotta do this, man. Freestyle session. Kenny Mack is in a place, man. My guy Rudy the Red Ruka, welcome to the show, man. We were worried about you. Appreciate y'all, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate y'all for pulling up. My guy Tyree Wilson. I'm getting defensive player of the year. 20 sacks this year. Yo, I hope so. I hope so. He has he, listen, he has a God given ability, man. Yo, I hate the new rule change. This is dumb. I will only watch the Raiders, nothing else. And I watch all games, but but not no more. This is turning to Pro Bowl football. Only said this to see a soft game. Yes, listen, man. See, this is what happens in America when you start doing the paralysis by analysis, when you sue people, when you make people put the business first, because the business of the National Football League is always first. And I think the problem with the NFL is, is the NFL is the number one or number two entertainment brand in America at this point, besides Disney, right? And it's like they're trying to make a violent game more palatable to the masses. And, it, it, yo, everything is it for everybody. And I'm just I'm really, really getting sick of it, man. Yo, that's a great question, man. I hate the new rule changes, man. My guy, coach, call it what it is, Wasted. They enacted the, the, the rule to control the game and thus put more of the outcome in the referee's hands. And, and listen, bro, if you see what's going on all over sports with in the NBA, Michael Porter Jr.'s brother at this point is there's a, like a point shaving thing that's going on. Some weird prop bets that are going on. Uh, the Shani Otani situation. Shani Otani situation. This is a real and um, this this is something that sports needs to address. Now, there's always been gambling. It just was illegal. But now with legal gambling, now this is an issue at this point. Now you have to wonder whether players that are lower rung players that aren't making generational wealth are going to throw games. Now you have to look at, you know, bad calls with a John this odd. You have to look at that. And, and, and the NFL opened themselves up for this when they made DraftKings and FanDuel some of their biggest partners. Because this is a business. They have to go out there and they have to acquiesce to their business partners. So that that's how you're hundred percent right, Coach man. Thank you for the five dollar holler, man. Appreciate you, my brother. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> Shawnee Otani, man. Tredavious White to the Rams, everybody. This just in. Tredavious White is to the Rams, and I, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I am hundred percent okay with that, man. I'm 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 cool, man. <laughs> my guy Rudy Devet Russo. Welcome to the show. We're worried about you, man. Appreciate you, Rudy, man. Y'all ain't got to worry about old wasted, but I'll be all right, brother. Yeah, they did it to themselves, man. So if you guys haven't heard, you know now. Former Bills All-Pro cornerback Tredavious White intends to sign a one-year, $8.5 million deal, the max value of $10 million with the Los Angeles Rams per sources. Now, this is the number. I'm surprised he got eight and a half million dollars man that guy's knee is like mashed potatoes man he had two catastrophic injuries in the last two years i'm i'm i am floored that the 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 rent that goes to show you how desperate the rams are you know that if there's going to be a bad contract written or somebody you know kind of gets um overpaid for what they did previously as opposed to what they're going to do in the future you know that's going to be the rams that's what the rams um whole mo has been this whole run with the rams my guy ga the Raiders screwed up Christmas, sent the NFL reeling into protecting Mahomes mode, baiting it on the shield. Bruh, it, it's not just to protect Mahomes. It's to protect their investment, bro. There were some catastrophic things that happened last year. If you remember the Tua Tagovailoa situation where, you know, to me, that was very, very hard to watch. Even an avid football fan, a guy that comes from the 1980s watching people get decapitated, it was hard to watch Tua in that injury. It, it was very frightening. And then the DeMar Hamlin situation last year, you almost knew that the NFL was going to do paralysis by analysis. And what the NFL tries to do, they try to be proactive. And a lot of the times they're proactive in, in, in their rule changes and they're also reactive. And I just think the NFL needs to just reside itself to the fact that it's just a violent sport. It's like trying to take the violence out of boxing. You can't. Wasted. We play against Mahomes twice, Herbert twice, Lamar, Burrow, Watson, Russ, Tua, Cousins, Carr, Lawrence, Stafford next year. And you're content with AOC, Minshew, or Michael Pennis Jr.? Shady Raider, let me ask you a question. What, what is the choice? 
right? And can I sit up here and comfortably tell you that Jaden Daniels is 100% better than Michael Penix Jr. when they're both rookies coming into the National Football League? You don't know that. I mean, as far as who fits with the Raiders better, I I, I think it would be Penix. I think he's a, you know, he's a more accomplished um, pocket passer. And I think that's what the Raiders need. He's He has functional mobility. Shout out to Mo Moten. Functional mobility. He, he doesn't have to be Michael Vick. He doesn't have to be um, Lamar Jackson. But what we need is we need somebody who has elite arm talent, who can stretch the field, who can, you know, you know, throw to Devontae Adams and utilize the weapon that he is, the Hall of Famer that he is. I think Michael Pennis Jr. is that guy. Now, can Aiden O'Connell mature into that? We don't know. But what other choice do we have? You act like we have another choice, Shady Raider. You act like we have a choice to go out there and go get a Pro Bowl quarterback. Who who was the choice for us? You know, at this point, I would rather see what I have in Aiden O'Connell. I would rather go and draft a guy than to go and, and, and um, make a trade. Like, there's nothing out there for us, bro. The only options we have is to roll with the guys that are on our roster and possibly draft somebody. Now, when you talk about moving up, I keep saying the same thing, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, and today this show is not going to be that. For you to move up, if, if the Raiders had a way to actually move up, and if they do have a way to move up, it, 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 it it's going to happen. And if it happens and they trap Jaden Daniels and in their infinite wisdom, they feel Jaden Daniels is the guy and they're willing to mortgage their future, then I'm behind them 100%. If you're asking me my opinion, I would rather them stay where they are and build the rest of the team because I don't think we're one player away from competing for a Super Bowl. I think we are a few players away. I think that we have a bunch of top five guys at their position. Yes, I do. Do I think this roster is in a better position than it's been in a long time? Yes, I do. Because even, you know, when we had the car years, we were a very top heavy team. Very offensive minded, top heavy team who couldn't stop a fucking a, a, a leak of water. Now it's a little different. Now we're more balanced, smash mouth football team. Defense travels. Right. And if 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 Zamir White can be what I think he can be and, and Alexander Madison can be what Madison could be what I think he could be, and they draft another running back. Now we got a, a, a dynamic run game as well. So defense and run game is what travels in the playoffs. Defense and run game is what beat the Kansas City Chiefs in the cold on Christmas. See, that's what I'm concerned about. Meaning, you know, winning the games you're supposed to win is good. Winning in domes is good. But you know what? I want to have a team that I know has a fighting shot to go into Buffalo in the cold and beat their ass. I want a team that can go into Kansas City and 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 give them give them a run for their money and beat them. Go into Baltimore on a rainy, shitty day and win. I remember the car years where we knew if the temperature was below forty degrees, we just weren't winning. I don't want to ever get back to that. Football is not an indoor sport, and I love the way this team is being built, man. LBC rated wasting my brother. We are the same age, and this game is getting too weak with these rules. Get off my lawn. That's a fact, LBC. It's too much. They're they're fucking it up, man. They're fucking it up. Yo, not only 15-yard free first downs, but also money taken from the guy trying to get Henry on the ground. This could create more injuries, holding up a guy for four more players to come in for the hit. Bro, every – see, this is, look, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. You notice in life. like like, And see, the thing is, I think the NFL, when they go into these rule changes – they're doing it in a way where they're not doing it in a thoughtful manner. Like, listen, my dad always told me, man, measure twice and cut once. What the NFL is doing is they're, they're, they're painting themselves into a corner because every year they try to address everything instead of getting a, a, a clear, and concise snapshot into what's going on with the game. Yeah, we got over 500 in the room, man. Oh, yeah. Shout out to Grab. Grab said, I called White to the Rams. Yes, he did. Called the contract damn there too. He had him around seven million, eight and a half million with, with incentives is a little bit more than what I thought, but he definitely did. Definitely did. And I agree with you too. As soon as they allowed and implemented sports betting in the sports world, they made all sports suspect. They're introducing these new rules to make it easy for the rest to control the game and the spectacle. And that's a fact, bro. And listen, the the, the one thing about sports, sports is supposed to be the ultimate meritocracy. Sports is supposed to be 
what you put out, if you if you put out and you produce more, you get paid more, you get the best results. The problem that I am having with the National Football League and sports in general is, is that they are trying to control the outcome on the field from a peripheral standpoint. They are trying to turn the NFL into a scripted mess of a reality show. It's annoying. It's annoying, bro. And 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 what what we need to believe as fans is we need to believe that what we're watching is legitimate. We need to believe it. We need to believe that what we're watching is legitimate, right? But once that belief is gone, we are the fans going to stay? Are you going to stay? Are you going to stay? And and that's that's the problem with all of this. That that is the that is the problem with all. Shout out to everybody on Twitter right now. Shout out to everybody on YouTube, man. I'm sorry for being a little. I, I, I thought I canceled this live, but shout out to everybody who hung around, man. I really appreciate all the love and the support from everybody, man. Shout out to my guy. Shout out, man. Wasted your word of the day, bro. Listen, I've I've dropped a few five dollar words on you already, my brother. The word of the day is coming. Wait, so you said it before many times. You can't move up if no one wants to play. We all need to be realistic and go for what's going on for right now. And that's a fact, bro. You can't mortgage the entire future being that we're so close. See, guys, this is the thing that y'all don't understand, yo. Nobody ever looks at the situation from a broader viewpoint. What happens if you move up, right? And I don't really want to get dwell too deep into this quarterback thing. What happens if you move up? You get the guy you want. You get the guy AP's asking for, and he's an abject failure. Nobody thinks about that. Nobody thinks about that, bro. What happens if the guy you want becomes a, a, a injury guy, an injury concern, and he's out all the time? No. Nobody thinks about that. Nobody. What happens if we get Trey Lanced? You know why the 49ers were able to weather the Trey Lance storm? Because their roster is so good that they took a seventh round quarterback and plugged him in and had him manage the game and they got to a Super Bowl. A damn Super Bowl because the roster is so damn good. Because you can take Brock Purdy and listen, no disrespect to Brock Purdy. He is proving everyone wrong, right? You, If you take Brock Purdy and put Brock Purdy on a lesser roster, I don't know that you get anywhere close to the production you get out of Brock Purdy. You take him away from Kyle Shanahan. You take him away from having the best left tackle in football protecting him. You take, him, you take away the best running back in football behind him. You take away a top 10 receiver on both sides of him away from him. I don't know if Ayuk's a top 10 guy, but he has top 10 potential. I mean, the guys can be special, right? You take away a top three tight end. Like, look at what we're talking about, and you take away a top two defense. Where's Brock Purdy at that point? They even have a great kicker. That team is stacked, and that is what I want for the Raiders. Because guess what? When you're that good of a football team, and the Ozzy knew some way to build a team. There were years when the Ravens would make the playoffs and they would have Flotsam and Jetsam under center. It wouldn't matter who was under center. And that's how I want the Raiders to be. So you guys, man, with all of this move up, move up, move up, man, it has to be within reason. It has to be a dollar cost value. And you got to be goddamn well sure when you move up that whomever you take is going to be successful. Yo, shout out to my guy, Ray to C, man. Appreciate you, my brother. Wasted. What does John Gruden think about bringing back DT Solomon Thomas? <laughs> you know what, bro? I don't know, brother. I don't know. I got I got my call group by the end of the show, Ray to C, and I'm going to ask him about Solly, man. Definitely. Yvette Niles, wasted. Next time in us, wait, next time in us to pull up and you decide to unceremony block ourselves. We the nation is coming for that ass. Oh, come on, Yvette. It was a mistake, Yvette. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 
my guy Ridge is in the place. Cornerback will now be desired to be six feet or taller. That's a fact. Your size is going to be at a premium for, for defensive backs now. Th that's a great point by Ridgeback. Size is going to be at a premium now. Because now, without the hip drop tackles, you can't have a guy that's 5'8 out there in the defensive secondary once a big, powerful running back or big, powerful wide receiver gets out there. You're, you're almost guaranteeing that it's going to have to be a gang tackle situation, man. And I, I just wonder how much, and, 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 and with, the, with the nuance of how they're going to call this call. See, I don't like penalties that have this much nuance, man. I don't like it. Because you cannot call it 20 times and then out of nowhere, you can just call it whenever you want. What the NFL needs to work on, play review, to turn over these bad calls from the Zebras. See, the NFL doesn't want that, bro. Because if that line goes a certain way, it costs their investors a certain amount of money. And I'm going to be real with you. The NFL doesn't want that. They want to keep their investors happy. Seems like the NFL has their favorites and red teams. They want they want it how it is that Kansas City in three Super Bowl has only got one holding call. They've become the new Dallas Cowboys. They've become the Patriots. Listen, whatever team is box office and whatever player is box office, the NFL leans into that narrative, right? The NFL has always traditionally marketed the helmet as opposed to the player, right? Like even with us, right, as Raider fans, right? Like so you can look at this hat, right? You look at this hat. And this is what got me into buying this hat because I have, you know, things with red in them. I have, I have a blue Raider hat. I got a gray Raider hat because I only care about that emblem, that shield, right? You could put that shield and I'll wear it. I got so much Raider stuff. It's ridiculous, right? And that's the thing. The NFL has always gotten away with that. So they've never really had to lean into superstar players. It doesn't matter who's playing for the Raiders, whether it's Charles Woodson or Marcus Allen, or Tim Brown, or whomever, we're going to support. We supported the Raiders when Matt McGloin was the quarterback. We supported the Raiders when Andrew Walton. So the NFL has the cheat code, but what they're leaning into is a more player-based metric. And I think Patrick Mahomes is a guy that the league is definitely behind. And, and, and it reminds me of what the NBA does with superstar players. They're crafting a narrative, and I don't like it. Just allow it to be what it is. Yo, we got over 600 in the room. We wasted up with your brother wasted. My guy, Rich, man, gifting five Raider Nation Unlimited memberships. Thank God, man. Appreciate you, bro. Rick Lavelle. Braden Fisk is one player I want bad with the Las Vegas Raiders. Straight up monster. Yeah, man. But you got to understand something, too. I would love to have Braden Fisk as well. And I know I'm jumping around, everybody, but it's the thing about Braden Fisk, bro. Are you willing to take him in the first three rounds? And most people are because he's a real talented guy, right? But we have a lot of other holes we need to fill on this team, right? And I probably I, I would value linebacker as far as a need on his defense over the interior defensive line because we went out and we addressed the interior defensive line in the last two drafts and in free agency. And it's like, okay, we're good there. We got we to gotta allow the guys on the roster to, to develop. That's the one part of this that people don't keep in, in, in the forefront of their thoughts is development. We we have to see what we can get out of this, some of these young guys. We drafted, man. We really do, man. We really, really do. M85. What if Uwaga dislocates an ankle? What if Terry and Arnold tears an AC on camp? God forbid. It's all what if. Now, see, M85 is different because Terry and Arnold is a mistake that you made this year. Right. If you draft a quarterback and you trade the next three first round picks, that's a mistake that goes on and on and on and on. That's the difference, bro. See, you guys like to take certain parts of the argument and we all we're human. We're human. We all do that. You want to take pieces of the argument and you want to omit the context in what I'm saying, bro. Do I want a, a new young quarterback? Yes. Would I prefer that it was Jaden Daniels or Caleb Williams? or J.J. McCarthy, or Michael Penix Jr. Yeah, those are the four guys that I'll be ecstatic with. If we got any one of those four guys, I'll be ecstatic, right? But at what cost? To what avail did it take for us to get these guys? To what avail? That's the problem. Because if it doesn't work, you know what you can do? You can turn around on a dime, and you can correct that mistake a year or two from now. But if you don't have a first and a second, 
for the for the foreseeable future. Now you're 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 mired in that mistake, bro. Come the f on, man. My God, Bobby Clark. The word of the day should be spectacles. That's what the NFL is providing us. A money maker spectacle to make money and Mahomes their cash cow. That's why he's so protected. Calls and all. And it is what it is. And it's never going to stop, Bobby. It's always been that way, bro. You know what? We came from a kinder, gentler time, bro. We came from a time where football and the sports media wasn't a um a 24-hour news cycle. Too much information is bad. Too much of anything is bad, right? It's... Yo, it's cool to eat a piece of, uh, of cake. I have a little bit of ice cream every now and again, right? But if you eat ice cream or cake every meal of the day, you're going to be fat. You're going to have diabetes. And you're going to probably throw up. Your stomach's going to be all out of whack. And that's what's happening with exposure and information in today's world. Some, some information is not great. Like, we don't need to know everything. I don't need to know how the sausage is made. I don't need to, I don't need to see everything. I don't need to know everything. And the problem with this gambling thing is it makes you look at the NFL under a microscope. And I'm telling you, that is not good for the game. It is not good. So every time there's a bad call, every one of you, including myself, are going to be like, oh, there go that draft king. There you go. There you go. There you go, NFL. I like, I like, I, I want. For the NFL to start putting the game first. You don't have us fooled by saying that you're doing this for the good of the players. You don't give a fuck about the players. They never did. This is the same league that you cared about the players. You give them guaranteed contracts. You give them guaranteed contracts if you cared about the players. You don't care about the players. Stop it. Stop it. It's the same thing in the NCAA. Now everybody's mad these kids can make money. Well, for years they were exploiting them, calling them student athletes. What a joke that is. An effing joke. Hey, Wasted, do you think we see more XFL players brought over to the NFL after the kickoff rule changes? No. Because the fact remains they still don't have the, 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 the pre prerequisite level of talent to be in the National Football League. Rules and all. Just because they're familiar with rules don't mean that they have the skill set to stay in the league. So, no, I, I don't see that. I don't see that. Let me get down to some of these supers, man. Pillaging just for fun, my brother. WYR. Arnold in the first or Latham. Offensive tackle and take a chance on Kyrie Jackson. And say trade back into the first and get Penix in either situation. Now, see, this is the reason why I say no. Because if you're drafting best player available, then that means that you're out on prioritizing improving the quarterback position, right? But as you heard from a Antonio Pierce yesterday, right, and you've been hearing this whole time, he said that we need to add another quarterback. So they're not set at quarterback. Quarterback's the most important position, right? Can we all agree on that? Nothing stirs and st stirs the drink more than a great quarterback. So at this point, if it's best player available or need, need has to trump best player available. So now within that need, quarterback being number one, you have to pick the best player available within that need. Because there are a lot of other players in, in, in some of these other needs that we hear and we think are the best, but rarely are guys that are at the top of the positional group, the actual best player that was selected in that draft year. There are tons of pro bowlers around the National Football League who nobody even gave a second thought to, who are tearing the National Football League up as we speak. Now, are there the chosen few who from pillar to post, from college to the NFL, to the draft process, live up to the billing? Yes, there are a whole lot of guys like that, the Vaughn Millers of the world. Navon Miller has been a Hall of Fame player. He was second pick, you know, at behind Cam Newton. Vaughn Miller has been everything he's lived up to be. Trent Williams is another guy. He's been everything. He's been box office. He's been exactly what they thought. Justin Jefferson, all these young guys. Yo, all these young These guys are exactly what people thought. Joe Burrow, yes. But there are all these other guys, the Max Crosby's of the world. There's more Max Crosby's in the NFL than there are 
you know, um, Joey Bosa's or Nick Bosa's. They're more Max Crosby's, guys that you never thought, you never saw that coming from, that are tearing the league up. Yes, you got the Miles Garrett to the league. Yes, you do. You have those guys, right? But some of these guys are not going to be as good as you think. And God help you if they're not. The real question is, what colors are the 2020, 2025 Super Bowl logo? Then we know who's in the suit. Nah, see, bro, you going off the rails with that conspiracy stuff, man. I, I really don't get into that too much, man. Listen, life's a gamble, M85. But the thing is, is, is it a gamble or a calculated risk? Don't, don't, bro, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You can take a risk and hedge your bet in the same time. Bobby Clark. Totally agree with you on development. People always expect players to be good now or they're worth nothing. Sometimes people need more time to develop their skills and aspects to get regarded. That's a fact, bro. Fact, wait a Look at Carolina, Denver. Generational mistakes. See, the thing about Carolina is, and this is the problem, I don't think that Bryce Young is a bust yet. I don't know yet. The kids only played one year. They're not giving him anything to support the kid. They're killing his talent. Like the kid is, he's first of all, he's small, right? So if you're going to lean into the trope that, yo, he's so talented of a passer that it doesn't matter, you got to protect him first and foremost. They're doing nothing to help this kid. They, they bring him in and then they trade away DJ Moore to get him. Just shit like that just doesn't pass the smell test to me, man. That's what happens when we have bad ownership. Yvette, the ref did us dirty in the day. They still doing it today. I agree. The new rule changes uh, football for the future. Yeah, it does. It changes football. It changes the way this game looks. And there's some people that are going to fall out of love with the games being in the ref's hands. The one thing about sports is that it is supposed to be inherently fair. We know life isn't fair, right? But we want the NFL, we want the NBA, we want boxing, we want tennis, we want baseball to be fair because it's, because it's a game. There are rules to games. There's morality that's involved that people are losing, man. The Raiders were never conservative. I remember gambling our draft picks on project players, players with injuries, trading future draft picks for bust. We need to be conservative slash smart. And that's a fact, Oscar Pont. That is the reason why we have not had a franchise quarterback in, in 40 years. That is the reason why, because there were years where Al thought we were one player away. He traded away too much draft capital. And that's the year that the guy was there and we didn't even have a damn pick. And that's a problem. Great candidate take on the draft. Can't mortgage top three picks for the next two years for a QB this year. We'd rather take Rattler in the third round if they can get a top lineman and a QB in the first or second. What I'm saying is, is that I, I think that you should stand pat and you you I think us as 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 Raider fans, we need to really look at some of these guys who are not named Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. We need to really look at these guys. Look, there, there are a lot of people who would tell you that Jaden not Jaden Daniels. There are a lot of people that tell you that J.J. McCarthy is a bum because, you know, what he did at Michigan. They look at the numbers. They don't look at 6'4". They don't look at the fact that he has tremendous footwork. They don't look at the fact that he's a tremendous athlete. They don't look at the fact that he has a tremendous arm. They don't look at the fact that, yo, he is a, 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 an elite processor of an offense. They don't look at none of that. He might fuck around and be the best quarterback to come out this draft. Michael Penix Jr., they don't look at the fact that he's already playing in a pro concept. They don't look at the fact that he has pro accuracy, that he throws the areas, that he that he he throws guys open, that he moves the pocket without having to take off and run. They don't look at the fact that he is a polished, polished quarterback. He's polished day one. So what happens when you take a kid who's a polished passer and put him around talented football players? He gets them the football and they can be special. Come on, man. Solomon Mitchell, you're doing an awesome job of taking the chat live without any preparation. That's why you're undoubtedly the best chat on the net, man. Yo, these guys are, man. 
the, the, the best chat in the net, man. Most knowledgeable, undisputed shit talker. Talk that shit. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Yeah, I, look, I watched the tape M85, and I like Jaden Daniels, bro. But I love Penix, too. I think Penix is a better passer than Jaden Daniels. I, 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 asked, I think Jaden Daniels, as far as an athlete, height, all of that, he's got it over Penix. I think Penix is a better passer. And if I'm being honest, I think Jaden Daniels is one hit away from getting broken in half. He's very small. He has a frame where he could put on weight, but the way that Jaden Daniels takes hits is very concerning to me when I watch his tape. It's very concerning to me. And then he doesn't really throw to the middle of the field a lot. He doesn't. And everybody is just, yeah, he won the Heisman, right, at LSU. And he did great. He had a freaking great year. But he has guys that are playing with him, and so does Penix. They have great receivers, all of that. I'm not trying to diminish what Jaden Daniels has been. I just think the reason why we got tunnel vision on Jaden Daniels is because AP coached him. We see the Jack Jones trope. We see the fact that he was in our locker room, and we get so caught up in the emotions. But we got to get caught up in the reality, the fact that everyone else sees how spectacular of a player he is too, bro. And I'm not willing to trade what it takes to get up there. Now, if if Jaden Daniels, and this is why I hope and I pray that another quarterback we're not expecting goes high. I'm hoping that J.J. McCarthy goes to Washington. And I'm hoping that New England is like, hey, man, you know what? We're cool on Drake May. We don't really want Drake May. We don't even want Jaden Daniels. We want more picks, right? The New York Giants, everybody says they could sneak in it. The Giants can't take a quarterback at this point. The Giants only have six draft picks. I think they have even, they got five or six. They they, they have like probably the, the six least amount of picks in the league and they have a roster that is riddled with with nothing they need to refill that roster they do it's not they're not and then you know if i'm being honest brian DeBall and the gm over there if this year's a bad year in new york people in new york will want blood they a lot of times people say that you know when the owner comes out and gives you a vote of confidence that that's all you need but the giants have done that before and the problem with the New York media is when the New York media wants somebody gone, they get fired because what happens is when the new, not the New York media, but the New York fan base, when it's in the media that we want somebody gone here in the New York, New Jersey area, the fans here, like even me being a Yankee fan, right? I'm a big Yankee fan. When the Yankees want somebody fired, they get fired because the owners know that that's going to affect their pockets. When the fans say they're not showing up the games, why do you think Josh McDaniels got fired? You think Mark wanted to fire him? He didn't. He wasn't prepared to. But the Raider Nation, we turned into like a New York, Boston, Philly kind of a fan base. Because we're very loyal. We're compassionate. We're patient. That's why we're all still here. We love our Raiders, right? But we don't put pressure on the organization because when Al was messing up, it was Al, and we weren't going to do that to Al. But now we'll do it to Mark. We, 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 we will put the world a world of pressure on Mark Davis. We will do it. We won't give a damn. And you know why? Because that is what you do, bro. That's what you do. That is what you do. And I'm going to tell y'all something right now, yo. Brian DeBall and them guys in New York, if they draft a quarterback, they will be drafting him for the next people that run that team because they will be fired. I'm telling you right now. So you don't got to worry about the Giants at five taking a quarterback. So if Jaden Daniels is out of the top three, then and only then can you consider drafting him because the price won't be as steep. I'm not saying that. See, you're you're putting words in my mouth, M85. I'm not saying don't pick unless you're sure. They're going to do that. See, bro, what I'm saying to you is, is that if you draft him and you draft him where you are or it doesn't cost you, you know, the foreseeable future, the, the, the better part of a decade's worth of picks to get him, then, then fuck it. But if you're going to trade away fucking three first round picks, two seconds and all of this kind of shit that I'm hearing it's going to cost to get up there. Yeah, you better be fucking sure. 
excuse my language, you better hope that you drafted the, the guy who's going to be your quarterback for the next 10 years. You better hope. Because when it doesn't work out that way, you wind up shooting yourself in the foot unless you have a roster that can sustain that kind of mistake like the 49ers. And we're not there yet. So what you said, you would rather take Penix at 13 but trade up if JD5 falls to four? That'd be the only situation you'd be only... Because listen, trading up into the top three is especially with three quarterback needy teams right what would you have to do to get those three quarterback needy teams to not select said quarterback you'd have to give them something that can be transformative for their franchise for them to consider not doing that moving up to four with arizona is different because they do have a guy that they took number one overall who is still relatively young they do they are in a situation where they can go back to 13 and most likely draft a wide receiver who they can that they can walk out there and pair with Kyler Murray. It might not be Marvin Harrison Jr. It could be Roma Dizzy. Because there's so much talent in this draft. The people in between Arizona and 13, how many of them are going to take a wide receiver? How many of them need a wide receiver? Let's let me let me let me pull up the draft order as currently constituted. Let's break it down, right? Let's break it down, guys. 2024 draft order. Let's find let's 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 find something here. Let's find it. So we got the draft order. Y'all, shout out to the chat, man. Shout out to y'all for riding with the brother. I wasn't even gonna do this live. I'm kind of glad I did, man. I'm having fun, man. I'm having fun, man. I hope you guys are having fun too, man. I hope you guys are having fun, man. I, I hope this is something that you know. You know, that wasn't a mistake. You know, I, I don't like putting out bad products, man. I, I like to definitely, you know what I mean, um, put 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 the highest quality content out there, man. So I appreciate y'all for ride, man. This, this show's turned into a decent show, man. All right, so round one. So we're, we're talking Chicago, Washington, New England, right? So let's, let's, let's. Let's look at this. The Bears definitely need a quarterback. The Commanders need a quarterback. They trade away their starter. New England needs a quarterback. I mean, for God's sakes, they have Jacoby Brissett as their starting quarterback. So to get these three teams to consider not taking a quarterback is big. Now, Washington said their pick is in play. New England said their pick is in play. So you know why they did that? They did that to allow you to know that, listen, if you wow our socks off, we will give you what you want. But these are two teams who are trying to build their organization from the ground. Now, Washington has some talent on that roster. But Washington is trying to start over. They have a new ownership group, a, a new feeling around there. So for you to get them to not select a quarterback in a great quarterback draft this year, you're probably going to have to give them the farm. Now, Arizona is a team who currently doesn't need a quarterback. Now, Mike Tannenbaum, one of the worst GMs to ever – being in NFL said that Arizona should get rid of Kyler Murray and draft JJ McCarthy, which is asinine to me. I understand his thought process, but this doesn't matter. The Chargers have Justin Herbert. They have their quarterback. The Giants at number six have Daniel Danny Dimes, Vanilla Vic himself, right? So at this point, the New York Giants can't really judge they 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 can't afford to draft a guy who's probably not going to play. They can't do it. So right here. This spot right here are three teams who don't need a quarterback who can possibly move down. Now, the Tennessee Titans, it's very interesting because Will Levis wasn't a number one pick, but he was a second round pick. And he looks like he's a guy that they're trying to develop. Right? So I don't see them getting a quarterback. Atlanta is not getting a quarterback. Atlanta just brought in Kirk Cousins. And at nine, the Chicago Bears are not going to draft a quarterback because they'd be drafting Caleb Williams. The New York Jets are not drafting a quarterback. They're not drafting a quarterback, bro. They're, they're, they got Aaron Rodgers, right? And then within these teams, Arizona, say, for instance, we move the number four with Arizona, right? We take our quarterback here. It won't cost as much to get here. And then if Arizona moves to 13, let's see how many of these teams would take a wide receiver. The Chargers, the Giants. Titans, possibly. 
The Atlanta Falcons could possibly do it. The Bears could possibly do it. The Jets most likely won't. Minnesota needs a quarterback. Denver needs a quarterback, right? So Arizona's gone, right? Let's say the, the, the Los Angeles Chargers, let's say the Chargers, you know, take – they drafted two wide receivers last year that they're really high on, so I don't see them taking a wide receiver. I see them taking maybe a Brock Bowers or a lineman. The New York Giants right here, I can see Marvin Harrison Jr. going right here. Right? I can also see the Tennessee Titans maybe taking a, a, a wide receiver here. The Atlanta Falcons, I see the Atlanta Falcons taking a lineman here. I really do. Or a defensive player. They would take a lineman to protect Kirk Cousins, and they take a defensive player, right? The Chicago Bears. With them bringing in Keenan Allen and, and and them already having DJ Moore, I don't see them going wide receiver here. Maybe they can go best play available, but I don't see that happening. The New York Jets, the New York Jets, they they have a, a, a gaping need at tight end. So if Brock Bowers is there, it would be Brock Bowers or it would be a lineman because even though they went out there and they got Smith and, and, it, and, and you know what I'm saying, they, they went and got Morgan Moses, those are one-offs right there. They need to make sure that the old man is protected. The Minnesota Vikings quarterback, quarterback. So, yeah, you could be at 13 and Malik Neighbors and, say, for instance, Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin Harrison Jr. is there. Roma Desi could fall to 13, and you could be all right with that. So I don't think that the price is as steep. I don't. My guy, drafting for need is building for the day. Drafting best play available regardless of position is building for the future. Win now or winning culture. Now, see, GA, that, that goes one of two ways because what you can have is you can have a log jam at a certain position, right? So sometimes best play available, does, that metric doesn't always fit. So say, for instance, the best player available is a defensive end, right? Yeah, would it be cool to get laid to? Or, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Max Crosby's our best player, period, right? And then Tyree Wilson's a guy who's supposed to be an edge, right, that you drafted in the top 10 last year. Then you have a guy in Malcolm Koontz who is super productive and young as hell that is on a, a cheap contract that you can resign as a home chrome guy. So is that best player available trope doesn't always work, bro. It doesn't always bloat. Bobby Clark, we've never been good at developing young players. We brought to the Raiders. I hope I've watched the organization fail at, at, at it for ages. It's very disappointing. Hopefully we had a piece in that. I think that's going to change now because if you don't develop young talent, you can't win in today's football. And I think that we have a winning recipe, man. Seriously, man. Shout out to everybody in the chat. We got 700 in the chat, man. Get wasted with your brother. Wasted telephone to telephone. M85. The thing is, is I, I okay, cool. But the thing is, is how is this settling if if you like Penix? Say Penix is one of the top three guys. He's a guy that you're okay with drafting. And he's right there at 13, and you didn't have to go anywhere for him. Isn't that better than margin in the future? Where because to me, it's splitting hairs with some of these guys. And that's the thing, bro. Shady, the same way you said don't judge McCarthy for not throwing as much, the same way Daniel's scheme may not have been to attack the middle of the field much. Bro, the only thing is the scheme has nothing to do with when you got guys wide open and you're a quarterback and you see that the middle of the field and you're afraid to make that throw. That's that's an actual film breakdown assessment because if they're not trying to attack the middle, you're not going to run routes in the middle of the field. You have it. That is just something that is that is a weakness in his game. It, it, it is what it is. And forget that, how vulnerable he is in the open field running the football when he's a guy who's a two-read quarterback who takes off and runs all the time. That is concerning to me, bro. Jaden Daniels and Michael Pinnish Jr. are both good QBs. I see them having a future in the NFL. I'm not sold on Rattler or Jordan Travis at all. It, nor should you be. Nor should you be, guy. Yo, shout out to my dog, Shalid, man. So we take Penis at 13. Surely got to draft a right tackle in the second round, right? Anybody you think we'd have a shot there? 
best DB available, you to go ways to keep spinning fast. Yeah, man, there, there are a lot. Listen, this is a, a, a super deep draft as far as offensive line talent. There were there, there were a lot of guys that are going to be available and we're going to do a mock draft and we can get into that. But see, this is the thing, man. You don't have to draft the right tackle because Thayer Mumford can play right tackle. Thayer Mumford is, is a good play. Somehow, some way, Thayer Mumford will be starting on his offensive line next year. You can mark my words there. You can live with Thayer Mumford. You don't have a gaping hole at right tackle with Thayer Mumford there. I really don't. I don't think so. My guy, Daniel Caps Keenan, gifting five Raider Nation Unlimited memberships. Man, thank you, bro, for making the Waste of Talent Army grow by droves the last few days, man. Thank you, Dan. Appreciate you. That's right. That's how we're going to have it. Everybody's going to be a member. Everybody eats. <laughs> the commanders could always roll with Sam. Not, Sam Howell is no longer there, brother. Sam Howell is a Seattle Seahawk right now. Sam Howell is a Seattle Sea Seahawk, man. So, you know, they can't roll with Sam Howell at this point, bro. They can't. And then, yo, look, man. You got to look at something too, man, with 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 the Seahawks. John Schneider, bro, is an old school scout, bro. And I said this before, John Schneider is a guy who always goes back and gets guys who he had a high grade on, grade on drafting, and he'll get them and bring them in and kick the tires on them, see if he can get anything out of them. It's the same thing he did with Drew Locke. Drew Locke is a guy that John Schneider had a, a high grade on when he came out in his draft year. When he was able to go out and get him, he got him. So he must have had a high grade on Sam Howe. So Sam Howe's no longer there. The Washington Redskins are in a bad way. They need a quarterback. No, I'm not completely sold on any of these kids. I'm not. I don't see, like, bro, people throw that generational shit around way too much, bro. They throw that generational shit around way, way too much. Way too much. When I see Jaden Daniels, do I see a special young talent? Yeah. But do I see Peyton Manning? Do I see? I don't see that yet. My guy, the big Valboski's in the place. D.A., was spot on wanting Stroud last year. He has only mentioned Jaden Daniels this year. Talent hits a target, Heisman. No one else can hit. Genius, APDA, hits a target. No one else can see. Get him at four or five. The big Valboski's in a place, man. Stream T, the Raiders watch these shows. So, so does every team. To the Kansas City Scout. Tell Big Bird we are streaking on his ass like it's the 70s. Now get the F out of here and hit the thumbs up on the way F and out. That's what the F I'm talking about, bro. Oh, my God, man. Yo, bro, that was, man, I got to let that man cook, man. Oh, man. The F out of here. Damn Queef fans. Damn, man, I'm so behind on the chat. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> so behind on the chat, y'all. Oh, the flying wonderful Marcella Brown. Excellent show today, Wasted. Enjoying you live. Appreciate you, Marcella. Appreciate you pulling up, man. Thank you so much. Hug D's, my brother. Wasted, real talk. Stock on essentials with that Maryland port closing. Things are going to bump up in price today while they clear the bridge. Love you, dog. Yo, hug, hit me in my inbox, bro. We we talk about stocks, right? Hit hit me up, bro. Stock up on the centrals, you were saying. Oh, yeah, because of the port. Yeah, no, nah, that's a fact, bro. Now we always listen, man. Let me tell you something, man. Mrs. Wasted Talent is is a serial shopper. It it looks in my garage and in my pantry and stuff like that, it looks like a damn convenience store. We 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 are bogged down with toilet paper. And everything you need here, bro. Food and, you know, there's an embarrassment of riches over here, man. My, my wife is, is the goat for that, man. My wife always makes sure everything's taken care of with that, brother. Yes, 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 yes. A cereal. She's actually a cereal shopper, too. Bro, I look, I'm going to take a picture. Listen, I am going to take a picture, bro. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to take a picture right now. And I'm going to show y'all 
<laughs> one day I'm gonna show you how much cereal is. My daughter loves my youngest daughter's I call her a, 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 a cereal bandit. She eats so much damn cereal, man. Net, yo, that's right. Need to be stuffing that that crypto bag, big bro. No, come on, crypto. You already know, bro. Listen, man, you know what's funny, man. Need to get on them stocks too, brother. We we gotta chop it up, crypto. Definitely do. We got it. Yo, we got to do it like that. My guy, Marcos Va Vasquez Jr., do you have any concern about the Vikings of Denver grabbing Penix Jr.? And then at that point, would you want the Raiders to jump them to grab Penix? Yes, I would. But the thing is, it to me, it's more – I can digest the Raiders moving up to, let's say, for instance, because if we're going to do the draft order, right, I can see the Raiders moving up to nine to get Penix. Right above Minnesota. I can see the Raiders moving up to, to, to six with the Giants. Listen, as long as – now, say, for instance, to get up with the Giants, right, and move up a few spots, we trade our 13th this year, we trade our second-round pick next year and our third next year. I'm okay with that. As long as we have our first because we can make a move to get those picks back next year. We can get compensatory picks, stuff like that. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at with it. My guy, Shalib, gifted five Raider Nation Unlimited memberships. Yo, appreciate it. Y'all are making the Raider, y'all are making Raider Nation Unlimited Army. Everybody gonna be a member over here. Everybody eats, man. It's unbelievable. Wait, so you ever take the the check the tape on Dwight McGovern out of Arkansas? According to PFF, he's the best cover corner in the draft, needs work on tackling. But will be a sleeper in the later rounds. Raider Rebel on these. No, bro, I haven't, bro. I really haven't. I ain't gonna sit up here and style with you, bro. You know, I there ain't no cap in my rap, brother. So I'm gonna write him down, bro. Dwight McGother. I wrote him down on my list, bro. I, I will do some scouting on him later because I haven't the de the defensive back group. I I've been really doing a lot of work on linebackers, um, offensive linemen and quarterbacks. That's what I've been really scouting because I think the Raiders defense is 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 one special uh, linebacker away from being a top five unit. I really believe that. I haven't I haven't done the corners. I know we need a corner, but, you know, I, I still have faith in Ja'Cory and Bennett. I really do. I have a lot of faith. A lot of faith, bro. Loom, what's up, bro? Hey, Wasted the Raider Nation from your friendly neighborhood Cowboys fan. I know I've been missing lately. Been dealing with the death of my dad. Oh, Loom, man. I'm, yo, rest in peace to your father, man. And, 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 bro, I'm so sorry to hear that. I know what it feels like. I lost my dad many, many years ago, brother. And, uh, bro, appreci I appreciate you pulling up, man. Hopefully that, you know, this live can, you know, ease your mind, my brother. But, yo, 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 shout out to you. Shout out to your family, my brother. Rest in peace to your pops. And um, at, you know, at the end of the day, man, um, it's gonna get greater later, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, funny thing is, bro, with with death, man, there there's always something in your life once you lose somebody important like that to you, that comes along and it makes it all mean something. You know what I'm saying? It makes it all mean something, bro. It's something that comes along, and you're gonna remember your father, and you're gonna remember the things that he's taught you. And it's and, and 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 it's and it's gonna give you comfort, bro. Trust me, it happens to me all the time. You know what, man? One, one thing I I will say about um graphic, right? One thing I will say about Big Mike, right? These guys have become my actual friends, right? I talk to graphic probably more than than almost anybody, right? And uh, he can tell you how many gems. I lay on him that my dad told me he's been gone since I was a young, young guy. And it makes me happy to talk about that. It makes it, yo, it, it gives me great comfort and joy to talk about that. And it also, it, it gives me joy to know that the things that he taught me is going to live on through me and my children. And it can live on to some of my friends. When I tell some of the things, some of the lessons, it, it helps out a lot of my homies, man. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate everything my dad gave to me, bro. So trust me, right now I know it hurt, bro, but eventually, bro, you gonna when you think of your pops, you're gonna smile, brother. Trust me, man. My brother Loom, man. Thanks, everyone. Fortunately, he isn't suffering anymore. 
and he didn't suffer when he passed. And that, I'm telling you, bro, that that's what it was all. Because my dad was very, very sick, and he suffered that towards the end. And it was almost a relief for me when 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 he um moved on to glory. It was a relief because I didn't want to. You don't want to see somebody that you look up to like that suffer. They say once a child, twice a child, right? So they say when you die, sometimes you revert back to the state that you were when you were a child, right? And um, it, it's, 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 it's hard to see somebody you view and revere that you think is invincible go through that, you know? And my dad didn't go through it that long. He was such a, a stubborn, strong dude. He, he said to me, man, when, when stuff started going off the rails, he was like, man, I can't live like this, son. I ain't going to be around too much longer. Fuck this. <laughs> and he passed on. You know what I'm saying? And you know what, bro? It hurt at first, bro. But, yo, he went out He went out like a fucking man, yo. Like the man he was, bro. So, yo, shout out to y'all, man. Bread break. Just lost my pops, too. He's right. Beautiful segue. So thank you, bro. Appreciate it, man. So guys, look, man, I don't want to, I don't know if it's appropriate to transition back into football, but Loon, if I can, you tell me if it's, if, if it's appropriate to transition back into football. My guy, Robert Hicks, gifting five, man, y'all, man, y'all are terrific, man. Thank you, my brother. Thank you, bro. Thank you. My brother, Top Beats is in a place to be, man. Top. Yo, Hug, I know you was trying to send me the hat, bro. I bought it yesterday on the air, bro. I bought it. Hug, do me a favor, bro. Send that hat. To... You know what? I send it. I got to I gotta send you and Top something, bro. I got to send you and Top something. My brother, Top, man. Gifted five rating. That's unlimited. Man, thank you, bro. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks again, everyone. Go ahead, waste it. It helps to take the mind off the drama I'm having to deal with in the aftermath. It's always drama, right? So, so, bro, look, you know what's crazy, guys? I saw the day that the Dallas Cowboys have drawn a line in the sand. They're not negotiating with Dak Prescott. They're not negotiating with Dak Prescott, right? So that's a team, right, that... You look at that situation. Let me ask you guys. Let me got ask you guys a question. I'm doing. I'm asking this cowboy question for my man Loon because he's a cowboy. You know, shout out to my brother Loon. Would you guys consider if Dak Prescott was on the open market and we didn't draft a quarterback this year? Would you guys consider bringing Dak Prescott in next year? Would you guys consider that? I'm asking y'all, would would you guys bring in Dak? Say, come on. I'm asking a question. I didn't give my opinion or assessment of it. I'm asking y'all a question. Listen, I'm going to do, I'm going to get my Mitchell Renz on y'all. Listen, if it's yes to Dak Prescott, give me a one in the chat. If it's a two, two is a no. Y'all run it off. Are you bringing in? Say, for instance, Aiden isn't the answer. Minshew isn't the answer. We don't draft a quarterback this year, and next year we make the playoffs or we're close to making the playoffs. Do you bring in a Dak Prescott on the cheap? My God, Loon. Remember, Dak was all pro, finished second in the MVP. Yeah, that was, that was, that was a few years ago, bro. It doesn't seem like he's that guy at this point. I see a lot of two. I mean, the way I view Dak Prescott is this. I think Dak Prescott is a good quarterback. Uh, I think you can win in a regular season with Dak Prescott. But I'm going to be honest with you. I think Dak Prescott essentially is just a more athletic Derek Carr. I think we'd be in a situation where we just we – just, We'd be in this perpetual state of mediocrity. Because Dak Prescott has really had the best of everything. There's no good reason why the Cowboys shouldn't have gone further. And the reason why, I, it depends on what that contract looks like. If, if Dak Prescott 
is a Raider, am I paying Dak Prescott like that? Because this is the thing. It wasn't that I blamed everything on Derek. I don't want to really bring him up, right? But I didn't blame everything on Derek. The, the thing I held against Derek the most was his contract. It was paying a quarterback north of $40 million a year to be mediocre. So then what you have to do is you have to make concessions for that mediocrity. See, you have certain quarterbacks in this league who elevate their rosters. Then you have other quarterbacks who teams win in spite of that quarterback sometimes. Dak is not a guy who elevates the Dallas Cowboys. He's not. Patrick Mahomes is a guy, and he's that's that's a bad analogy because Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in football. I can't stand a fucker, but he is. But he elevates that roster, and that roster is a damn good roster. But even when they were trying to figure it all out with all them rookies, people dropping passes all over the place, Patrick Mahomes still going to win. Joe Burrow, when healthy, still going to win. Hug, uh, it's not that I won't send you my address. I just got the thing, but I actually bought the hat, bro. It ain't ain't got nothing to do with that, hug. Yo, you family, bro. I sent it to you, but yeah, you yo, you can send you can send it you can you can send it yo send it to Top Beats, bro. I appreciate that, but I I actually bought the on the air. I wasn't bullshitting when I showed Graph. I bought it. I bought it because I wanted to make sure I got it first. <laughs> my guy Ridge, have you talked about the new kickoff rules yet? think we're set up to be really good with the new rules with the speed at returner. You're going to be able to beef up blocking slash coverage guys too. I think, I think, I think you're absolutely right, Ridge. The, the thing is, is that even, even with the new rules, I don't think you're going to get like more returns. I just don't. I just think teams have relegated themselves to kicking a ball out the back of the end zone, bro. Now, I see Raider Rebel. You said, why would you negotiate when you got Trey Lance sitting there for pretty much nothing? Could be the next Jordan Lover, Baker Mayfield. Now, look, this is the thing. There's nothing. There's not Trey Lance, bro. And I, I believe that's why they brought him there, right? Trey Lance better take, from what I see out of Trey Lance, I see a guy who didn't play his senior year because of COVID. I see a guy who played in a really weak conference in college. And I see a guy that is a, 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 a hope. A crazy, a like, yo, unbelievable, like, uh, like you know, he he's a guy that is the great hope of the NFL. I've never seen a guy who got so much hype and's done so little, bro. So I'm cool on that. Cool on that. Shout out to y'all, man. Yeah, no, no one Dak, bro. So said no one Dak. OP, the Chiefs front office would be scheming how to exploit the new rule changes. Yo, every every front office should be trying to exploit that new rule change. That is what football is about. That's what football is about, man. My guy, Nate Dog, excellent freaking question, bro. What is your ideal draft scenario for the Raiders this year? Look, man, my ideal draft scenario is that the Raiders address the quarterback position and hit on the quarterback position, uh, draft a, a starting linebacker, draft a, 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 a secondary corner somewhere where, you know, he can be a guy that gets significant minutes on the field and draft a starting offensive lineman. That is the ideal draft scenario for me. Let me see something, y'all. Mock draft. Yo, we're going to do a mock draft, and we're going to get out of here, y'all. We're going to do a mock draft, we're going to get out of here. Y'all ready to do a mock, y'all? Let's let's do a mock draft, y'all. I'm going to find a good, a good uh, mock draft, man. We'll do the Pro Football Network joint. We're going to do seven rounds. 
speed fast. We're going to enter the draft, y'all. Now, hold on. Hey, guys, hold on. Y'all see the draft? Let me. I'm going to change the view. Yo, what's good, Kane? Kane, what it is? All right, y'all, look. We doing this mock draft, and we going to get out of here, guys. All right, so I'm going to go back in. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Everybody ready for the draft? <laughs> Y'all seem like y'all ready, man. We going to do the mock draft. Look, in the middle rounds, right, this is what we're going to do. Um, You guys are going to tell me what we're going to do. Do y'all want to do it like that, or do y'all want me to do the draft? All right, cool. Look, I'm going to go to it now, right? Well, hold on. Mock draft simulator. All right. Share this tab instead. Can y'all see everything? All right, cool. Now, we're at the 13th pick. The Dallas Cowboys have offered us the 24th pick in the draft. Um, They've offered us the 112th pick in this draft. There's way, way too much talent left on the board for me to trade back because I don't need that. Uh, I'm going to reject. Let me see if there's another trade. Dallas, we're going to reject that. We're going to pick. We're standing pat. Now, let's look at the board. Kayla Williams has been taken. Drake May has been taken. Jaden Daniels has been taken. Malik Neighbors has been taken. Dow Turner, all of these guys, right? Brock Bowers is available. Terion Arnold is available. Talisi Fuaga is available. Guys, I'm going to go and I'm going to I'm gonna go out here and I'm going to take Terion Arnold. We need a cornerback. We're going to go best player available. 44, we're going to reject that. We're going to reject because the dream scenario has just hit us, y'all. Michael Penix Jr. is there in the second round. Michael Penix Jr. is there in the second round. Now, guys, Penix Jr., we took him already. We took him already, y'all. Okay, now we can get cute here. Nope, we don't want that. We don't want that. Nope. Nope. Reject. 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 So Chris Jenkins has been taken, right? So now Braden Fist is available. Cedric Van Pran's available. Javon Bullitt is available. Now Jeremiah Trotter Jr. is available. Now listen, what we, we need to do is let's go some defense. It's a defensive driven team, right? Dwayne Carter's available. Right. So let's go offense tackles. We just got a new quarterback. Right. Blake Fisher from Notre Dame's 105. That's a little too high for my blood to take Blake Fisher. Right. Let's check out some guards. Dominic Pooney is a very good player, man. But I think that what we can do is. Zach Zinter is available. I'm going to go ahead and take Zach Zinter. I like Zach Zinter. Roy said, Fisk, my bad. We got to protect our quarterback. Okay, I'm going to accept this trade. We're accepting this trade. We got more picks, right? So now we took... We need a, we need a running back, y'all. We need a running back. Let's see who the best player available. Michael Pratt's available. Makai Wingo from LSU is a beast in the middle of the defense. Kyrie Jackson is still available. We took we took a corner already. We can double up on corner. Um, Jerry and Jones is a beast. Jerry Rice's son is available. All right, y'all. This is y'all pick. This is y'all pick. This is your pick, everybody. Everybody, consensus. We need a linebacker. Edron Cooper's not there, bro. I wish we did have Edron Cooper there. Edron Cooper's one of my favorite players in the fucking draft, yo. Linebacker. Let's see who's available. 
Jalen Ford's a beast. Tommy Eckenberg's a beast. Omar Spates is here. Cornerbacks. Cam Hart is still available. Kyrie Jackson is available. Makai Wingo is available. On offense, wide receivers. The wide receiver room is crazy. Brendan Rice, all of these guys. Luke McCaffrey. Matt Concavez is a beast. I think I can get him a little later. I took the trade. So, guys. Wingo's a beast. Linebacker, Kyrie. Kyrie, running back. Frank Crum. I can get him later, though. Jalen Wright, wide receiver. Bro, I'm going. Listen, I'm, I'm. You know what I'm gonna do, guys? I'm gonna take Jalen Wright. We need a running back. We need a running back. I'm gonna accept this trade. I'm gonna reject this one. So we got running backs galore here. We got tight ends, wide receivers. Look, you know what I'm going to do? Let me go back to the chat, y'all. Best player available. We got so many picks now. So best player available. Jared Wiley, Jordan Jefferson, Look, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think it's time for us to take another corner. I'm taking Johnny Dixon. I like Johnny Dixon, bro. Right? So now we got to go and get some 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 help on this offensive line. We haven't gotten an offensive lineman yet. We're going to go with Frank Crum. You know what? I want to go and get me some help up, up front, some, some more help up front. We haven't really addressed the wide receiver situation here. Let me see what we got here. Austin Reed still there. Sam Hartman is still there. Isaac Garendo still there. I'm going to go back and get Isaac Garendo. Why not? Prince Pines, Drake Nugent. Let me see. What we got defense here, bro. We haven't gotten. We yeah. We need it. Nehemiah Pritchard is a guy that is very very talented. Y'all like Nehemiah, but I've just taken a. I already took a freaking. Sandita Anderson from Grambling is yo. He's a beast too, y'all. Jackson Mitchell a UConn. I like him. We taking him. Edge, Eric Watts, defensive tackle. We're going to do best play available from here on out. Got another offensive tackle, Charles Turner. Let me go to the chat. What do y'all think? Yeah, Quinion Mitchell wasn't there, bro. Quinion wasn't there, y'all. Quinion was gone already, bro. Quentin Newsom, Caden Wallace. I'm going to take the tackle. Take the big tackle, man. All right, this is our, our draft is done, y'all. We got a starting corner, starting quarterback, our offensive starting guard of the future, got possibly a starting running back, another corner to round that, that room out, a possible tackle of the future. Another running back of the future, great young linebacker, and Jackson Mitchell, and another tackle. I think we got better, y'all. What do y'all think, man? What do y'all think, man? Bad draft, B-plus draft? I took Frank Crumb, brother. We got him. 
Solid B minus. <laughs> Shout out to the chat, yo. Need three cornerbacks and three offensive linemen. Yo, listen, bro. Hey, hey. I got the two extra picks too. Solid. Yeah, I passed on. I, I did, bro. I did. But, but see, top. You know why I did that? I did that, bro, because I need to make it interesting, bro. I shouldn't have taken Zach Zinter. That was bad. But the, the, the reason why I did it is because, like, that, that guy's not going to be there then, bro. The, 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 the Zach Zinter pick is going to be one of those ones that are debatable. I was willing to do that, man. But, guys, listen. No help at center because we just paid our center. We're good. Said this draft is semi-leather, yo. Fuck you, Q. Listen, y'all. I appreciate you guys pulling up and rocking with me. I wasn't even expecting to do this live. I thank all of you for pulling up. I thank for y'all for supporting this channel. If you guys have not hit the subscribe button, let me let me take this down. Please hit that subscribe button, man. We trying to we trying to uh get to different heights here, man. You know what I'm saying? I really starting to take this this more serious, man. And I I, I want to um grow this this platform as is 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 as big as we can get it, bro. Real rap. I want. I want. I want to. I want to take this to the next level, man. I thank you guys for supporting us, man. Shout out to my guy Lunatez Pell Moon. Rest in peace to your pops, man. Um, shout out to everybody who hung out and waited, man. Thank y'all, man. I appreciate y'all. We gonna get out of here, man. Y'all already know. I'm not even. And thank you, Martin. Thank you for the congratulations, man. I'm not even gonna say it, bro. I'm not even gonna say it, yo. But I got to. Yesterday's price. It's not today's price. Man, it never gets old, y'all. Y'all have a freaking terrific night, man. We will be at back at y'all all week, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Peace. Yeah.